part two of the evils of feedback. <laughs> Sorry. Yesterday's video went like seven minutes or something. So today we're going to try and see if we can't wrap it up in a part two. Unless I get going even crazier and then we'll have a part three. But, you know, I mean, see, as I get older, I get longer winded. Mm hmm. All right. This originally had come from a question from Mal in Australia who, who said, um, global feedback and audio applications, I believe to be evil. The problem is he can't prove it and wonders if I could help him gain sleep at night because he thinks that it is evil. And in fact, it can be evil. So in yesterday's video, I explained how feedback works. So I'm not going to go through that again. Go back and watch it. And it's a pretty good explanation. It might help you understand how feedback actually works when we do this loop feedback business. Okay. So today, let's talk about why I said feedback is not evil under certain conditions, just like bad guys aren't evil under certain conditions. <laughs> when they're being nice or playing with babies, right? They ain't evil, but they can be evil. So here's the deal. What we have found from a sonic standpoint is that if you use feedback to get the frequency response or the basic operation of an amplifier up to some standard that you want, that's bad. If you take a properly working amplifier with no feedback and you wrap feedback around it, that's not bad. Case A, if we do something to normalize an amplifier that isn't normal without feedback, now we're in trouble. So let me give you an example. Your typical op amp, if we, we go down to Texas Instruments book or, or uh, linear tech or whatever, and you look up in their catalog and you pick an op amp, uh, uh, you know, uh, whatever, I don't know, whatever, you choose it. Most operational amplifiers, 99.9% .9 of all operational amplifiers have very, very low open loop bandwidth. Open loop means no feedback. If you were just to run this thing, and most of them won't even run open loop, they have such high gain that you try and run it without feedback, it, it just, eh, just locks up. But for those that will work with no feedback or with the barest amount just to keep it going, their average frequency response is below 1,000 cycles, typically around 100 hertz. 200 hertz. So imagine designing an amplifier whose bandwidth is 200 hertz. I mean, that's it. And anything above that, it, it rolls off and is non-existent. What they expect you to do is take that, those gobs of feedback, wrap it back around, and pull that back up to flat. When you do that, that's bad sonically. And I don't have time in these videos, nor, to be honest, as much knowledge as, say, someone like our engineer, Darren. Darren, Darren gets into the nuts and bolts of this far more than I do. And I'm going to try and start twisting Darren's arm again to do these lunch sessions. We used to do lunch with Paul. And, and he can dive in. Uh, the only problem with it is he gets so technical and most people go, and I try really hard to give you super simple explanations that are easy to understand. So anyway, okay. So take my word for it. If you have to make something, you know, if you have to use feedback to make something work within the audio band, you're not doing good. Or something that has poor step response or any, any number of items. But design a circuit that let's say it has 60 dB of open loop gain. And that's a lot. I mean, that's a thousand. So you put, you know, one volt in, you get a thousand volts out. Well, obviously that, that doesn't, you know, so you have to put in, that, that's a lot of gain. So obviously that's, that's the kind of gain we would use for a phono cartridge. So it puts out, you know, 0 0.002 or 0 0.02 millivolts, and then you can multiply it by a thousand, you get a decent output. Okay. So with that gain of 60, it works fine. Our frequency response goes way beyond the audio band. It's 
let's call it 30K, 40K. The distortion, reasonable, 0.1. That's a pretty decent amplifier. And on its own, will sound pretty damn good. Now, if we then take and wrap feedback around, so now it's running, let's say you wrap mm, 20 dB of feedback. Now you have a 40 dB amp or 30 dB of feedback and you have a 30 dB amp. The distortion goes down, way down, and the frequency response goes way out. The output impedance of the thing goes way down. All good things, but we're doing it not to make something bad good, but to make something good better. And that's the key to doing feedback properly. And that's what we do here at PS Audio when we design circuits. We don't use circuits that have 100 hertz bandwidth. We just don't do it. We, there are op amps out there that are actually pretty decent. Um, National Semiconductor makes a few of them. They're audio quality. They, they can run open loop. Um, they have reasonable bandwidth, and then you wrap some feedback around, and they're like pretty darn good. But you got to know what you're looking for, and most people don't get it. Most people don't understand this, and so that's where this disconnect comes. So, hopefully, <laughs> Mal in Australia can get some sleep tonight, because you now know that evil lurks in feedback sometimes. Thanks for watching. Talk to you tomorrow.